Welcome to the Digi Android Studio Extension Tools session. I will demonstrate how developers using a Digi Connect Core embedded system on module running the Android operating system can use the Android Studio extensions provided by Digi to create feature rich applications quickly and easily. I will show two graphical sample applications developed by Digi representing two different use cases to demonstrate how developers can leverage the Digi API extensions for Android using the official Android application development environment, Android Studio. The best starting point to get going is Digi's embedded documentation portal, which can be reached from every embedded product page on Digi's website by going to product support. As you can see, the platforms that are supported by the Android operating system are marked with this little Android icon. And you can click on any of these to get to the actual Android documentation page. I would recommend for new users to work through the Get Started guide first. This explains in detail the software and hardware requirements, how to set up the hardware, in this case the embedded development kit, how to program the Android firmware and how to create your first application, which includes installation of all the required tools. First, download and install the Java development kit and then the actual Android Studio integrated development, development environment itself. You can do so by just clicking on this link and it will guide you to the official download page of Android Studio. You can download it from there Install it by following the on-screen instructions. I will show you the next steps directly in the tool, but remember all the steps are explained in detail here in the Get Started Guide. So whenever you, are, you, had, you need more info, just go back here and click any of these links, which will send you to a section where this topic, um, each installation step is explained in detail. The next steps are to install the Digi extensions for Android Studio first, and then as a second step also install the SDK add-on, which is required to integrate the Digi APIX for Android into the appropriate Android version that, that we are using. So to do that, let's start Android Studio. When Android Studio is started, it will show this welcome dialog. From there, you can just click configure and select settings in the menu, which will open up the settings dialog. If it's not selected, go to plugins in the, in the menu. And from there, you select marketplace here on top. And you click in the search uh, in the search bar and you just search for digi and that will bring you to the digi extensions for android studio you click install and when this is done the tool might ask you to restart the ide if that's prompted then do that just restart the ide and you will come back to the welcome page if not you can just close the um, the settings dialog here which will lead you back to the um, welcome dialog. From there, select configure again and choose SDK manager. In the SDK manager, we need to enter a um, URL for the, for the tool to find the appropriate Digi tools. So what we are going to do is we are going to SDK update sites. And from there, we click the little plus icon here on the, on the, on the right side. For the name, we can basically choose any name, but let's do Digi SDK add-on. So we will find that later. And the URL you can copy from the documentation, of course. And I will just do that right now. Copy and paste. It's this link and it doesn't require any authentication. So we can just click OK. And the Digi SDK add-on entry is here in the list. Click, to, uh, click on the SDK platforms entry again. And now 
click Show Package Details so we see more details for each Android version. Go to the Android version that is currently running on your Connect Core module. In my case, this is Android 9. And if you don't see the S Digi SDK add-on for Embedded yet, just click Apply. After that is done, this entry should come up, Digi SDK add-on, and you just click that to enable it to get it installed. Also make sure that the Android SDK platform for your Android version that you are using is selected as well. When that is done, you can click Apply again, and it will ask you if it can install everything that you just selected, and you confirm that with OK. And that's going to install all the tools that are required to create Android applications on the Connect Core module. Click Finish and OK to close the remaining dialogs. As a final installation step, I would recommend to also install the um, Google USB driver um, to allow USB debugging directly on the target. The um, generic Google USB driver is compatible with our Connect Core SOMs and the Android that we are using on, the, on that SOM. Um, so that's that's good. So you can just uh, download the generic Google USB driver and you can do USB debugging as you would do on a standard smartphone or tablet. Before we are going to, to um, create and start our first application, let me quickly show the um, hardware setup that I have on my desk currently. So you can reproduce that if you want. I'm using the Connect Core 8X SPC Pro running Android 9. I have connected the serial terminal cable to see serial output on the console. I have connected Ethernet. I have connected a display. And I also connected the USB-C cable. And that's what I'm going to use for the USB debugging. And of course, I connected power as well. So if you, if you have the same or a similar um, development kit, you can just go through the steps, set up hardware, and it will guide you to do what, what exactly I'm doing. And you can follow my, my example. So let's create our first application. And to do that, we will follow the Get Started guide point four to create the Android application. I'll show you that directly in Android Studio again. So from the welcome dialog, we will uh, click on import uh, a Digi Android code sample. And that will open this dialog, which shows all the sample applications that are available for this Android version currently. And you can see there's already quite a lot of sample applications um, demonstrating different use cases and um, access of hardware interfaces of the, of the DigiSOM. We will use the Getting Started Sample application. So we select that from the list, click ne uh, Next, and we can choose a name. So we can leave it as it is by default, that's fine. And we just click Finish. This will create the project. Which will open up the default Android Studio view. And you can see it's still loading because it's doing some Android build at the at the beginning. So we just wait for that to be com completed and then we can get started. If during the creation of the project, Android Studio is asking to update the Android Gradle plugin, Gradle is the integrated build system of Android Studio, dismiss that and do not update the plugin. The um, Digi sample applications have been built with a specific Gradle plugin version, and updating that plugin can cause the samples to not work properly anymore. So you can just click on this little dialog here if it comes up and just dismiss it. When the project creation is done, you will see the project structure on the left side and any open file on the right side. So we can open this app structure here and open the Java folder and the package folder, and we will, we will see two Java classes. One is a board utils, which is a helper class, and a main activity class, which is basically the source code for the, for the main user view in, in the Android application. An activity in Android is a single user screen 
um, that, that a user sees. For, just to give you an example, an email app that would show a list of emails. And if you click on an email, it will show the details of that email would, be, would normally have two activities, one for the list and one for the details of, uh, of the email. In our case, our sample is the um, default GPIO getting started sample application. So we are not dealing with emails. So we just have one activity which will show a graphical user interface to the user uh, where he can select some settings, how to blink the LED and so on. So we are going to run this application on our Connect Core SOM. And if you connected the USB-C cable, it automatically populates this entry here in the, in the start dialog or de device selection dialog to be precise. So we can leave it as it is and, may, and, and make sure that the app um, part of the application is selected and just click the start or run app icon here on top, like this, and it will run the application. And this will transfer the application to our Connectqua 8X SOM in this case um, and start it directly under Android. Remember that you can always use the default buttons on the top bar here to control the application. Um, I think the most important one for the start is the stop icon here. So with that icon, you can always stop the application. I have team, the TeamViewer app installed on Android on my Connecco 8X SBC. Um, and with that, I can show you remotely what I see on my screen. And you can see the getting started guide sample has been started and it has its nice, nice user interface um, with one button. And that button allows me to um, start a cyclic blinking of the user LED zero, which is on the SBC itself. If I press that button, the LED will start blinking. And you can see that if I switch to the camera view, you can see here the user LED is blinking every second on the single board computer on my desk. So let me stop the blink activity and also stop the application using the stop icon. Let's have a quick lo look at the source code. If you hover with your mouse over anything or you mark something, you can see that the Intelli um, sense is coming up and you see that there's a lot of information and details provided for each function and each class that, that is provided by the system. Um, which shows that the Android Studio is really a powerful tool, adding a lot of details and information directly in the code. But what is interesting for us is further down where we are using the Digi Apex. So let's find that function where it's used. You can see it's already used in some minor functions, but the main one that I want to show you is the um, start blinking function. That's where the blinking is actually starting. And you can see we have a GPIO value um, class that we are using here. And we create an object um, based on that. Uh, and then we are toggling basically that GPIO value high and low, depending on the button press and the, and the timeout. All of these application extensions or Apex added by Digi are documented in a lot of detail in the uh, documentation portal. So if you go back to that page that we left open, you can just open Digi Embedded Android here, this section, Application Development, and there you have an entry for the Digi Apex. If you open that, you see every hardware interface that is supported, for example, the GPIO. And you see there's a lot of explanation details and also sample code. So you can check either this documentation or review the appropriate um, application examples in Android Studio. As a final step, I would like to show you another example. And this one involves Digi XBRF modules. Digi has added a Java library for the XB modules. And if you search for the XB Java library documentation, you will find this, this documentation page here. And this explains how to import an XP Android sample application into Android Studio. You need two XP modules, 
One will be mounted on the single board computer uh, on the XP slot that is present on the, on the SPC and the other one should be connected to your PC. When you start the application using Android Studio, it will come up with this user interface, which looks like this, which allows you to connect to the module that is on your SPC. And when the connection is done, it will show you information about the module. You can change parameters or review parameters, but you can also discover remote devices with the discover button. In this case, it will find the um, module that is connected to my laptop, which is a XP3 USB stick adapter. If I select that module, I can remotely change parameters, but I can also send a message to that remote device by using the on-screen keyboard. Let me type a message. and send this data and I can check if the data has been received on the remote end by using our XCTU tool and you can see if the XP that is connected to my laptop um, is opened in the serial terminal in XCTU you can see the incoming data. That concludes this demo video. Thank you very much and happy coding!